The act of capturing ghosts is a prospect which has captivated the hearts and minds of dreamers, paranormal investigators, esoteric scientists, and religious zealots alike for centuries, perhaps even millennia. The youthful spirit dwelling inside of us has a preternatural desire to capture everything it can. In our youths, when our connection to the mystic is strongest, we may spend our days catching frogs or butterflies. The particularly ambitious may even attempt to catch fairies or leprechauns. As we grow old and our skin turns into sandpaper, our passions do not fade but transform. No longer satisfied to seek the enchanting and obsessed by our own inevitable conclusions, when our brains melt into goo and our teeth turn into diamonds, we seek to understand what lies beyond. After all, what we truly seek when driven to the act of hunting and trapping is not predatory so much as it is acting out our need, the need to understand and grow. Shinto is a religion indigenous and unique to Japan. In Shinto, it is believed that divine power dwells in all things. Ordinary objects and animals can be seen as deities, as all things have a spirit. Ghosts are all around us. And there is even a ghost inside of you, driving your meat. Fact is, you are surrounded by ghosts right now. They are watching you. But it is not for you to understand what they want. Perhaps they have even been there for millennia. Or perhaps they are following you, waiting for a moment of weakness before consuming their prey. Ghostwire Tokyo is a game about ghosts. The spirits which normally dwell on other planes have crossed the border into our world living have ceased to exist. The underworld has become the overworld. Using our understanding of spirits, Shinto, and the streets of Tokyo, the player must navigate a disinhabited world and try to find some meaning amongst all the desolate chaos. Ghostwire Tokyo it's a game about capturing ghosts and understanding the world of spirits. For not all denizens of the spirit world are unfriendly, but many are beyond our comprehension. In the game, the player encounters many famous spirits from Shinto folklore, including Tanuki, mischievous raccoon spirits. Kappas, frog-like spirits who enjoy cucumbers, Nekomata, floating talking cats with two tails, Zashiki Warashi, prankster spirits which hang out in parlors, Karasaka Kozo, popping spirits resembling umbrellas, reminiscent of some construction from Alice in Wonderland. Etan Momen, which look like a piece of flying toilet paper. Roku Rokabi, long necked ladies beckoning the player to chase after her. Kodama, cute spirits which inhabit the trees and must be protected at all costs. Kamaitachi, which are pretty much ghostly flying squirrels. 
And of course, Nurakabi, whose sole purpose seems to be to block doors. These yokai and others guide the player and haunt the player to the winding streets and rooftops of Tokyo, taken over by the spirit world. The story told in Ghostwire Tokyo is an interesting one, if perhaps a bit simple. Basically, Tokyo has been taken over by ghosts, because some guy did some wizard stuff that broke the barrier between this world and the next. All textbook stuff, and unfortunately the game won't dive any further than what you could probably guess on your own, at least on the main line. The side quests, on the other hand, are all more interesting, if a bit short. All in all, the game tells more with its visuals than it does with the actual story and characters. I give the narrative of the game a 7 out of 10. Visual storytelling is an area where Ghostwire Tokyo really shines. Graphics on their own are actually pretty average. However, Tokyo the city has been realized in such great detail that wandering through the streets of the game, I felt that I came to know the city in real life. The beautiful rendering of Tokyo combines with a strong aesthetic for a dreary horror makes the game a truly unique experience. Ghosts and spirits really feel as though they have taken over the streets of Tokyo. And blending with the perpetual overcast mixed with intermittent rain creates a real vibe. Similarly, enemies are all cleverly conceived and are creative enough to evoke horror while also somehow feeling down to earth and very on brand for a game set in the busy streets of Tokyo. The enemies range from ghosts you might find in horror movies such as The Ring or Grudge, to headless girls in soccer uniforms or businessmen who evoke the surrealism of artists such as Rene Magritte. I particularly enjoyed when the rain would get heavy and the sound of thumping paraders started to ring around me right before the ghost parade would march to view from one of the many winding streets in the labyrinthine Tokyo presented in the game. Some of the levels as well were beautifully designed to create a trippy atmosphere as they would change shape as I navigated them, transitioning from ordinary Japanese apartments to Escheresque ghost madness. As I delved into the domain of some particularly powerful spirits. The visuals of Ghostwire Tokyo provide a unique experience, which on their own mark the game as a worthwhile adventure. I give the visuals 10 out of 10. Gameplay in Ghostwire Tokyo has a solid mixture of action and exploration, however the lack of gameplay options does hold it back. Ghostwire Tokyo is set in what I would call a semi-open world, similar to many games which have come out these days. The map is fully explorable, however ultimately it is a linear experience. Side quests lack depth, and without real options in combat, some of the fun from customization and optimal paths are lost. While much care was put into the side quests, they never feel more than the main line, which is somewhat straightforward. That being said, there is still much fun to be had just exploring the streets of a direly haunted Tokyo, even if many side quests amount to little more than fetch quests. The combat is entertaining, and despite few options, it doesn't really lose its sparkle. However, the lack of variety and ways of playing the game and ways of fighting mean that every encounter 
kind of plays out in the same way. Even when you go the stealth route, stealth is barely useful and will probably devolve into the basic combat anyway. The enemies are colorful and unique, but there are not that many unique enemies to encounter in the game. I give the gameplay a solid, yet unremarkable, 8 out of 10. All in all, I would say that Ghostwire Tokyo is a game which is begging for a sequel. The core game experience is solid and the uniqueness of the world has endless possibilities where they could go next. The game suffers from underdeveloped side quests and lack in diversity of enemies and gameplay styles. However, they could easily have expanded upon what they already have to bring the game to its full potential. You might enjoy this game if you like games such as Skyrim, Fallout, and other open world games. Though it doesn't offer the full open world experience, it's still good for some kicks. It may also be of interest to horror fans, anime fans, and investigators of the paranormal. Don't play this game if you like bright and uplifting stories, as this game is anything but. It is gray and melancholy, but the horror makes it exciting. To the developers of the game, I recommend more content in every way. I would love to see the world and stories have as much detail and variety as the environment that they created. I give the game a solid 8 out of 10. And a Terminator. I'll be back. Because I'd love to see a proper sequel. Make the game be as good as I believe it could be.